Hello everyone and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. And in this episode I am going to send the my manned mission to Joule as promised. And also as promised I have redesigned my launch system. I have decided to go with a new version of my IVA launcher which uh, was used in my very early YouTube episodes. Uh, my first YouTube series in fact. Now that IBA launcher had procedural fairings. That was the only mod involved. But so I can't quite do what I did with there because it wouldn't be streamlined enough. It's still got uh, the seven main sails at the bottom. That's the important thing. But that launcher was able to carry 144 tons into low carbon orbit. I don't think this one does quite as well. That one also had really strange staging and this one has much more straightforward staging. So uh, seven seven main sails as you were able to see. And then the, the orange tanks as usual and of course uh, here we have the skippers and seven as well there. They all stage together. And then finally four poodles. And then that's, that's the launch. Everything up to there is launch and this is the spacecraft and it has one poodle here. And then finally uh, one of the LV-909s here. So that's the, that's the size of it. And actually, this is not meant to launch things into low carbon orbit. This is meant to launch things on interplanetary trajectories only. And in particular, this uh, should be able to get this spacecraft over to Joule. So that's the plan. So this whole thing is the spacecraft. And my hope is that we're going to be able to get the Kerbals to do EVA reports around all of Joule's moons. So that's the goal here and that's why we're carrying so much fuel. These are also goo canisters, so if uh, if we need to do goo experiments because the goo mission missed a particular location, hopefully we'll be able to do that. We can transmit data. We have, uh, where is it? We have an antenna here and also antenna up here. So that's good. I think I want to add some parachutes now that I look at it just in case technically technically this pod should just be fine with that parachute but I don't want to take any risks so that should be alright also perhaps some battery power I think I was pining for battery power here. Let's get... No, let's get the small ones. Now obviously I had to do this off camera because getting all the stuff in line is a little bit tricky and you can see some of the some of the build process was a little bit complicated but yeah I think uh, we've got right right now and and yeah let's get some crew in. I guess may, maybe we'll have a fresh crew or should we just send the big three? We can only send three by the way because that's that's the capacity to return which is what we've got there. Hmm. Yeah I guess we'll send the big three. They'll have an uh, extraordinary voyage around Jewel. Alright, so without further ado, let me just check if I forgot anything. No, I think we're okay. Hopefully I've got everything calculated out right. So let's just take this out to the launch pad. And I've just named it Explorer on the new version of the IBA launcher. So that's what it'll be. Can't land on anything, unfortunately. That's not... Because uh, we're planning to do a grand tour of Jules Boons. We're not planning on landing anything yet. But perhaps on a future mission we'll aim for a landing. And perhaps uh, with this launcher we can add a lander for, for a Duna mission. This will probably be able to send a lander over to Duna. 
And the added complication was that I, I was thinking about making a lander, but the problem was we don't have docking ports yet. I could theoretically have the grabbing unit do things, but that seemed a little bit iffy. But yeah, we don't have docking ports yet, so uh, this mission, among others, will be going out there in order to get the science so that we can lock, unlock docking ports so we could do a proper, proper lander mission in the future. Alright, so out to launch pad. Okay, here you can see the assemblage in all its glory. And SAS on, throttle up. Uh, I think uh, I think we can do a countdown because we've got all three of the big guys here. So we'll say, uh, yeah, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, and just running. One, commit, and lift off. We have lift off of the Explorer to Jewel. The launch tower is clear. Carrying three Kerbals on an interplanetary exploration mission. All systems nominal. Jebediah Kerman reports that he's totally excited to be here. No particular word from Bill and Bob, though. Okay, beginning gravity turn here. Okay, all systems are good. Getting ready for first stage separation. First stage separation. Second stage lit. This stage should mostly get us into orbit. The next stage will probably circularize us. Assuming all goes well. Okay, second stage is out. Second stage separation. And I think we'll like the third, third stage for a little bit. Very nice. <laughs> okay. So we'll boost up to 100 kilometers. Let's say 120 kilometers, actually. Because we need uh, a smoother orbit to have a longer, uh, to have the burn time for the interplanetary injection. Okay, so 120 kilometer apoapsis. Let's take a look and see if we can make a direct transfer. It's possible. Now, of course, we're sending the big three over to Jewel, which is, of course, the more juicy target with all its moons and everything. We'll have to send a different group of Kerbals over to Duna. And remember, the Duna encounter is pretty soon, too. But might as well get our pros over to Jewel. Now I did say I wanted to go with the fast encounter to Jewel. 
but I don't know if that's really useful because I haven't figured out how long it is between that and when they'd be able to come back. So... And sending them on this trajectory means that they'll be heading in faster. Well, I guess they'll be alright. I guess we don't want our Kerbals to spend that long en route. If they're over there doing science, then that's better than if they're just hanging around en route. So, alright, uh, we'll, we'll get them there quicker. Okay, I think... I mean, unless... No, it's, it's probably going to be about there anyway. Alright, so... That'll be how much it costs. That should be alright. Let's get solar panels out. Not that it helps. For some reason I always think of getting solar panels out when it's dark. Sort of a funny thing. Okay. So, really, the science lab, I, I don't know if we're going to get any use for it. The Kerbals will have to transfer via EVA, of course. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, consider it more living space for them, because... After all, they'll be pretty cramped if they have to stay in the capsule the whole time. That's basically the idea. And potentially more necessary supplies for them, whatever their necessary supplies happen to be. Okay, time to... Burn. Uh, I'm actually a little bit late. You notice there is fuel cross feed, so I'm going to dump these outer ones first. Now I might go without saying, but of course I wanted to put the larger solar panels on this. It's just that I haven't unlocked the larger solar panels. I didn't really want to use these stinky small ones, so I had big grand solar panels for my expedition. And so if we do happen to lo unlock those before the next time we launch this, or maybe a future time when we launch this, then I'll change those solar panels too. Okay, the outer engines are out. And they're off. They're off. Okay. Just the central one now. This is still the launch stage. The this last portion before we get to the actual spacecraft. So the launcher can set about 40 tons on a uh, Julian trajectory, I guess you could say, uh, uh, transfer to Jewel. And this is a little bit shy of that. How much are we right now? We're 66 tons. So maybe it can actually set more than 40, I'm, I'm underestimating. Because this is a 18 ton tank and the engine is only 2.5. So a little bit more than uh, 40 tons over to Joule. And we're going to have plenty of fuel to spare. In fact, uh, we could probably use this engine for further maneuvering around Jewel. Or doing the mid-course plane change, that too. We are deviating a little bit because I started burning a little bit late. The best way to see that is the gap between the the maneuver node and the prograde vector. The further apart those go, the worse off we are. Okay, I sense at this point some tweaking might be necessary. As we don't seem to be getting our encounter, 
and instead boosting to Elu for some reason. So let's uh, add a little tweak here. Okay, well that'll have to do. I'll write that one then. And... Oh, jeez. We actually expended that stage. Well, that's not good. We're probably a bit too heavy then. Mm, RCS, please. Okay. So we're uh, 47 tons-ish on this stage. And I guess that's a little bit too heavy for the launcher. If we're gonna set it to Jewel. Okay. So that's good enough. Let's see how much the mid-course plane change will be. Well, it could be worse. 208 for a periapsis of 12,000 kilometers. That's reasonable. Okay. I think we will go with that. So, that'll be in 22 days as the spacecraft crosses the orbit of Duna. And then we'll have to aero break at Joule, which should be an interesting experience for the crew. And then everybody will be happy. So, this is our spacecraft. Very, very interesting, I think. And again, the fuel from these feeds into this one and they can be dropped off, saving the mass of the tanks. And yeah, Bill, Jeb, and Bob on their epic quest to discover what's out there in Jewel and its moons. And they'll get as close a look as they can without actually landing on the surface of these moons. And with that, I think uh, I think we're done for this uh, for this episode. We've done our thing. Uh, maybe uh, well, let's have let me just double check that we can't get any more signs from around here. We actually have, if I can find them, thermometer, and that can't be done. Goo experiment I'm sure we've done from high over Kerbin. We're not going to be able to recover this anyway. So, how about a crew report? Yep, okay, so everything's been done around here, but... Once we get into... Actually, we could probably do that now. We're going to get the Kerbin Escape in six hours. So let's let's get to Kerbin Escape. And then in interplanetary space, we definitely haven't done any science yet. So let's do that. So time warping. Okay, we're now in interplanetary space with our other probes by the way you can see our fleet of probes right alongside here probe launcher y the uh, jewel goo launch and the jewel science junior launch uh the probe launcher y the the probe in the middle of the little aircraft that we had launched and we actually have one going over to duna as well where's that one that's one that's over there okay so now that we're out here, we can do new science. I don't know if the thermometer will work. The bar barometer almost certainly won't. Nope. Okay, so first of all, a crew report. And we can transmit this data, and we should, because we need that docking port and those solar panels. So let's transmit the data. 55 science added, excellent. Let's have Bill do the EVA report. Okay, let's just transmit that. Oh, right, of course. Board. Now transmit. And voila, 88 science added. 
Now I know we haven't done a GUI experiment out here. GUI feels right at home. And I'm gonna transmit, uh, well, uh, let's, let's hold on that, uh, keep that data. Let's get some people into the lab module now. After all, they should be spending time in there for their long trip. Um, should have aligned the crew, well, they're, they're, they're pretty much in line. Let's get uh, Bob and Bill, I guess, it would be the most logical thing. Okay. Should have just made it easy on myself. Uh, oh, 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 come on. Up, up. And just put ladders all the way, but... They do have a funny way of grabbing onto things. Okay, that's one in. Okay, alright. Come on. Okay, board. Alright, so now only Jeb is in the command module. The other two are in here. Process lab data. Okay, let's process that data. And see if we can't send it back. Now, of course, our... Uh, our goo mission will be... Why is this window a little bit weird? Hmm. Anyway, our uh, goo mission will be actually trying to bring it back. But uh, this time we can just uh, relay it. Okay. Can we... Clean experiments. This is the first time in any of my videos I have done this, by the way. Uh, because I almost always just bring the stuff back. But there we are. I have successfully processed information from a GUI unit and transmitted it back to Kerbin. So that's first. And we've got much science from this mission already. We haven't even gotten to our destination. Uh, I suppose the thing to do would actually be to quickly jump to the Science Junior, uh, really just the Science Junior one, and do one Science Junior experiment. Well, I, I'll do a Goo experiment, but I'll keep those. But let's transmit some science from a Science Junior. Okay, here's our Science Junior spacecraft. Let's observe materials bay. Transmitting is only five units. We'll keep this data. Oh, we're still high over Kerbin. We haven't re uh, reached escape trajectory yet? Well, we haven't even done high over Kerbin. I guess we ha do we have to keep it? It's not worth as much as everything else. We'll we'll dump that for now. Let's see. Why aren't we on escape trajectory? Wow. This one's taking a lot longer, actually. Okay, well, let's get to escape trajectory. Uh, not trajectory. Let's get to escape. Okay, now we seem to be on the right path here. Let's try this again. 55 science. Ooh, but 275 to recover it. My GUI seems to be a little bit weird whenever I've got this thing open. Hmm. That's funny. Oh. That's a tough decision. Well, let's go for maximal science. I'm gonna keep the data and hope that I didn't 
wasn't really desperate for that 55. You have to do the math here. We've got one to do over Jewel and one for each of the plant. Well, actually, we're, we're really short on them. We've got four for four of the moons. So, yeah. Okay, let's go to Go Experiment just to make sure we have one done high over the sun. Rhymes. But, uh, yeah, so that we can bring that back as well. Okay, green for goo, very good. And observe the mystery goo. High over the sun. Not worth transmitting, apparently. Oh, yes, because we already transmitted all the transmittable data. So we gotta keep the 71 science that is recoverable. Alright, so uh, with all that science, maybe we should check the tech tree. Here we are, we've got 238 science now. We pretty much had zero before. And here are the solar panels, but that's 300 science. What I want though is the docking ports. Standard Clampatron docking port and the shielded docking port, those are the ones I want. And 160 science, yes. So now we have the docking ports, so we can do a proper lander mission and even build rudimentary space stations, though we don't have the big docking port yet. That comes later. Also, we're doing all this without the atomic rocket, so just for a side note there. But yeah, now the Duna mission will have proper docking ports and can do all sorts of more interesting things. And we can look forward to that, but next time, next time I want to aim at some of our asteroids start doing a little bit more science with them and figuring out what else we can do with them as well. Also I need to figure out the naming thing because I thought I renamed some of those asteroids but they didn't really stay renamed. I don't know about that. But yeah, so asteroid stuff next time and I'll also do a basic tutorial on how to do a rendezvous along the way while we're doing our mission. So I'll do that next time as well. We've got all our jewel missions in the way, and it should be exciting to see how those turn out. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.